This is Lou. As we move into these seasonal holidays, you see him putting up displays in the box stores and the grocery stores, and you see these sections of the store transforming into whatever the festival is that's happening. Uh, currently, we've got the pumpkin thing going on, and then not much later, we're going to have, well, they're already playing Christmas music, but uh, the, uh, the, the trees and the ornaments and, and the presents under the tree and, and this guy named Santa Claus. Who is that? I'm going to tell you at the end of this video. You, some of you already know. Well, <clears throat> uh, not too long ago I came out with this little book called uh, Nimrod's Secret Identity. And uh, Nimrod was a real man. He was the first king on the earth. But what he's turned into he became a mighty one, it says in, in Genesis or Barashith, that he became a mighty one on the earth. Now that means a deity. One thing most people never know is that all the pagan deities were born on December 25th. The birthday, as they call it, of the sun. Who is the being they are unknowingly worshipping? The first king on the earth after the flood was Nimrod, and the languages were confused after the Tower of Babel debacle. All the pagan deities are also babbled names of Nimrod. Think of one. I'm going to put a few up here on the screen that will pass by, and they're all just babbled forms. They're sun deities whose birthday is celebrated on December 25th the solstice in, in the ancient world. And they're all Nimrod, this mighty one. So if they're all worshipped as a mighty one, then they're idol, Id, idols. People are practicing idolatry. Any pagan deity that we can think of is one of the many secret identities of Nimrod. Constantine associated his sun deity, A-P-O-L-L-O, -L -L with this f fictional name that was implanted in, this, in the Greek t text, I-E-S-O-U-S. -S. And that was taking the place of the name that used to be the Hebrew form of what they call Joshua. It's really yod He ua shin Ayin, Yahusha. It's written 216 times. All you have to do to prove me wrong is go to an interlinear translation. Look at the Hebrew of the word Joshua. It's not Joshua. There's no J. It's Yahusha. It's really Yahuwah with a suffix on it, Sha, which means deliverer. Yah is our deliverer. He always said so. He's only one. That's the greatest commandment. Yahuwah, our Elohim. Yahuwah is one. He's not two or three. And his name is Yahuwah. I think it's uh, Yasha Yahu. They call him Isaiah. Eight. It, in there it says, I am Yahuwah. That is my name. And I do not share my esteem with other idols or other Elohim nor give my praise to them. Well, he, he declared his name as Yahuwah. It's used 6,823 times. I keep saying this over and over because the people that are out there putting up these big billboards on the internet are using these platitudes. J-E-S-U-S is my savior. That's a fake name. And they're getting away with it. Some of them are I saw one put up by the son of a, uh, a very prominent uh, pastor, and he was up there just talking away at this uh, idea that J-E-S-U-S is the one you have to believe in, and he was cutting down Islam, which is okay. You know, you can cut down uh, other false religions because you don't have to cut them down, but you have to expose them. Because that's what Nazarim do. See, we're Nazarim. Yahuwah called us that. He said, I am the vine. You are the Nazarim. That means branches. 
of his teachings and his practices. And we live as Yahusha lived. We don't live as the J-Man lived. The J-Man, we don't even know who that is. And certainly his practitioners or his followers, they don't obey the commandments. I wonder why. Commandments are on the gate stone. Just read them. They're in Hebrew here, but the Hebrew is the inspired word, and that's what we go to to test all things that we that we hear. If you don't use the Hebrew, you're not using the inspired text. You're using a translation, a translation like Latin or Greek or English. Translations are are, are basically uh, they're not inspired but they can be led into more truthful translations, but they're not the inspired text. You don't go to the English to find out, hey, let's find out if this is true. That's not what the Bereans did. They didn't go to the King James Version. They didn't go to the Latin Vulgate. They didn't exist. And they never went to any Greek texts. They are not inspired. The prophets did not write them in Greek. And the Nazarene, the first Nazarene followers, they didn't write in Greek either. They wrote in Hebrew. I've talked about some of the things that occurred in the past, in like circus fathers that met some Nazarene. Well, anyway, Constantine associated his son deity with this I-E-S-O-U-S. And this clearly makes the modern lawless J-E-S-U-S character another solar deity. And that name didn't even exist until less than 500 years ago. It developed slowly from IESV or IESU into the JESUS, adding the ending Greek masculine term. So he's a solar deity, really, because he's, he's stolen the identity of the real Yahusha. And the rest of the secret identities of Nimrod, that's basically what we assume that we don't, I mean, they don't know that they're, they're assumed identities of Nimrod. Search for the book, Nimrod's Secret Identity, and see if you can, I mean, it's not, it can't be expensive, it's on Amazon. We have it at torzone.net also. And uh, figure this thing out and get it straight, because this, this misinformation has got to be cleared up. That's what Nazarene do. We tear down strongholds and false reasonings that are not true. Thanks for watching this video. And we really appreciate it. And like and subscribe. It's right down here. And uh, get, get in touch with some more of these videos that I've already made. There's over 520 of them. But uh, watch the later ones that come out. And, and if you hit the little bell, you'll get a notification when I send one out. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.